Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Autografool and the 2018 Geneva Motor Show. This is going to be a very quick preview of the new Nissan Leaf. Why very quick? Well, we're aware that there are already some driving reviews of this car online. We're going to do ours very soon, but we don't want to keep you waiting for now. And as we are here, spoilt for choice for cars, and this is such an important one, it seemed like a good idea to take the opportunity just to show you around the redesign so you can get a flavor for it before we get to take it out. Now, there haven't been many cars in history that have divided opinion so dramatically as the last design of the Leaf. What do I mean by that? It was incredibly popular. It's one of Nissan's best-selling models, and it is the best-selling electric vehicle that you can get. The styling is what I mean. Now, okay, you have an awful lot of batteries to fit into any electric car. But seriously, Nissan, the previous one looked a little bit like you described a car to a person who'd never seen one before, given them a piece of paper and said, go ahead, draw what you like. It had its fans. I wasn't one of them. Fair enough. But I think even Nissan recognized they wanted to make the styling look a little bit less controversial, shall we say. And at first glance, I think that they actually have approached that. It's still very definitely a Nissan. The angularity is all still here. And why limit yourself to having black lacquer piano inside the car when you can put it right on the bumper? Again, not my taste, but never mind. Compared with its predecessor, this does look a lot more modern. We still have very sculptural angular headlights, but they look a little bit more intentional now. They look cut into the bodywork rather than sticking out and extruding from it. So I think that's a huge improvement. Let's take a look and see how it runs through into the side. Well, the previous Leaf didn't really give us a huge amount to play with from the side profile. Almost could call it either nondescript. Well, you still had those incredibly distinctive <laughs> rear lights poking right into your field of view. I am really pleased with what they've done here. This looks so much more stylish. Again, I think maybe somebody owes the light designer, which is why every time they redo the car, they still get to have some angularity to it. But they're so much more discreet. The car still keeps its uniqueness right from this nice pitch straight through from the bonnet into the side. That looks so much more natural than its predecessor. And it flows. The previous model most definitely did not flow. And these lights now, instead of looking terribly uncomfortable, look very intentional and completely unique. Good job, is what I would say. Nicely done, Nissan. This is a car that I'm not going to be embarrassed to drive. Through to the rear now, and wow, what a change. Now, some people might say, well, I still don't like it that much. I'm not going to say that's the greatest back of a car I've ever looked at, but you know what? compared to the last leaf. It's fantastic. Again, it's stylish, it's modern, it feels contemporary. There are many people walking in front of this shop, but we're gonna keep going, we're professionals. It really makes a statement, and the statement is, this is a leaf. It's completely unique, it's not confusable with any other car, but it's also not overblown and too much. I'm really impressed with how they've done this, and I think if they've carried that through to the interior, it's really a step in the right direction. The previous Leaf looked a little bit spartan on the inside and very, very plastic. I think that they've really worked hard to continue that evolution in style and design in the interior. Look at this, it's a huge improvement. The screen doesn't look so plastic and nasty as the previous one. I don't know if you remember, but it had that fold down screen. It just didn't feel nice. And you could see that breaking really very quickly. So it's nice to see that properly integrated here. 
you have to bear in mind with this car, obviously, the most important functionality of it is its ability to deliver electric power to you. So you're going to get some compromises because to bring that in at a price point that's realistic, you're going to need to use slightly cheaper materials on the interior and that's going to mean a slightly cheaper infotainment system. But really, it looks very functional and I'm sure it's more than capable of doing the job. The steering wheel feels like a grown-up steering wheel compared to what came before. We now have this full functionality. Here we have a partially digital display. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, in electric cars, that really comes in handy, specifically because we really need to keep up to speed with what the car's battery is doing. And this gives us a lot of features that we like. We've got blind spot detection. We've also got... There we are tire pressure monitoring always a big fan of that and we have the ability I think to set cruise in this one I believe that's what that is hopefully we'll find out a bit later other than that very nice simple straightforward air conditioning heating and cooling controls this car comes with heated seats that's a nice touch we have a USB port we have an aux in for the stereo and we have a 12 volt charging point now one of the features of the first Leaf that I was never a fan of, but lots of people were, was the gear knob. And I think that Nissan have really listened to the feedback because the styling has really quite radically changed, but the gear knob has not. Now, why am I not a fan of this? It's very gimmicky and a lot of people love it. I think the reason is only that I think everything that you touch all the time when you drive should be made of the best materials you can and I just always felt that if this had been made of something like a brushed aluminium it would feel and resonate with quality whereas the plastic you can't get around it feels like plastic but now with this black finish and this blue lighting around the side it certainly looks a lot better it looks better quality a nicer finish if they'd surrounded it in anything other than this fingerprint magnet then I'd be really happy with it but come on I'm being picky you've got everything you need we've got cup holders back here and pretty decent storage bin as well again this car was really never intended about providing people with a luxury drive but that said the drive in the predecessor was always very very good this one I'm hoping can only be better but in terms of the way that the style has changed I think you can say that the leaf has grown up I think for me one of the things that I've always liked most about the Leaf is that where other manufacturers have been pursuing making bigger, making faster, Nissan I really think were pioneers in terms of saying look electric can be for everyone and we can make a very credible car. We can give you a small car that will achieve everything you would expect from a small car on an electric platform. A lot of people prior to that said it just wasn't possible. Now I think this is a really good example. Look at this. I've actually got a decent amount of headroom here. Yeah, sure, there's not a crazy amount, but I've got quite a long torso and I still have about an inch spare above my head. Look at this knee space. Yeah, you could say that's not enormous and I don't have long legs, but it's a small car. And I'm more than impressed with the way that the space is being used here. But not just that, because the space was very well used in the first Leaf. Again, it's all about the styling. It's so much better. This doesn't feel like a child's car anymore. It really feels very adult. And I'd be perfectly happy taking a drive back here. The seats are comfortable, they're firm, they're supportive. You're really not gonna want three people in the back, but you're comfortable with two. Batteries, of course, begin being located underneath these seats. Common complaint with electric cars, always. Well, that's great, but I have no boot left. I was always very impressed with how the first Leaf dealt with that. Let's see how they've done with the predecessor. A common complaint with electric cars is always, well, where do the batteries go? And nine times out of 10, it really limits the amount of boot space you have. One of the features I like best about the first Leaf was the fact that they used the space so unbelievably well. You still had a really great amount of boot space, even with those batteries. So let's see how they've done with this one. <laughs> Wow, that is absolutely fantastic. Now you might be looking at that thinking, where on earth are the batteries? Well, as with the first, I believe that they are underneath the back seat. So 
there's no shortage of room in here. Obviously, we're a little compromised in terms of the loading area. That is certainly not what you would call a zero depth entry, but that's giving us as much space as we could possibly want. We have a little just covering there. There's nothing underneath. We even have a subwoofer in the back. And nicely, in contrast to a lot that you can see fitted on cars, this is not going to be hurt or affected if you load shopping on top of it. So, really nicely thought through, really decent space. Well done, Nissan. So, the new Nissan Leaf, what do we think? Well, I did say at the start it was going to be a very brief look, specifically because there's a lot more detail to come when we do the driving test. But I was desperate to see what they'd done with the redesign, and this just gives you a taste of what's to come. Well, I have to say, hats off to Nissan. If the first car was a revolution in terms of electrified transport and offering a relatively inexpensive for an electric car that people could buy en masse rather than just wealthy people, then this car is a revolution in style. I'm so happy to see that it hasn't lost its distinctive character, but it has lost some of its... Hmm. Well, you can put that word in there instead. I think it's great. The interior is nice. It looks a lot more grown up. It feels a lot more grown up. And overall, I would say it's a superb next step for the Leaf. Now, will that be delivered in terms of the drive? Will you still feel that same range anxiety? Will you still have to fork out really rather a lot more than for its non-electric opponents? Well, we're gonna have to wait to answer those questions. But for now, I think it's a very nice job indeed, and I'm really looking forward to giving it a drive.